Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for finding me on the YouTube dial and enjoying my exploration of the wide world of pens. And yes, you may recognize this box. I did a preview video of upcoming pens and this was one of two. Nice uh, new logo. At least it looks kind of new to me. Nice box. You know, nice uh, inventory sticker on the back. Lid just comes off. Uh, it's a friction fit lid. And inside we see an instruction booklet and a very interesting pen with a eyedropper. Nice red eyedropper. So this uh, booklet has the uh, old style Moon Man logo on it. And if you go through it, you'll see they do have an illustration of doing a eyedropper fill pen. So that's nice. Of course, they also have examples of many other filling mechanisms. But this pen is just a hoot. It's cute. It feels good in the hand. It's not heavy considering its size. I love that acrylic. It's just, you know, it's hard to not smile when you see this pen. You know, it's done in, in a nice chunky style. That clip is very stiff. It's a little spring to it. You know, a nice band around the bottom of that cap. Again, with that Moon Man laser etched in there. The cap comes off with a little over two turns. And we see a nice section, nice number six nib. There's a little bit of transparency there. We'll get the LED light out later and, and confirm that. And much to my amazement, that section feels good in the hand. It is probably too short for almost anybody to write with, but you could use it for quick notes. It does post, as one would expect, very well. And then it makes for almost a normal size pen in length cap is pretty secure. It does change the balance a little bit. There's a fair amount of weight in that cap, but you know, the, the pen is not heavy to begin with, so it's not that much of a problem. Brought the camera down so you can appreciate more of the size of this pen as now it fills the frame. So what's in the other box? Well, the other box has and I think you can guess, the clear version. This is done extremely well. I enjoy that. You can see how it's all put together. And you can also see how it's threaded at the end of the section and it goes into those threads there in the, the cap. Looks like it will seal up pretty well. You know, this top finial is screwed into the cap to hold in that band that's connected to that very stiff clip. That barrel is really nice and ah, beautifully done. And to do the eyedropper fill, this unscrews. Nice O-ring there. The nib unit unscrews. Haven't taken one apart like this in front of the camera before. And we see a nice O-ring there at, at the top where it seats up in there. So the ink leakage. We'll see if that nib will uh, pull out for a, further on in the video. You know, it's uh, interesting engraving, that new logo. It is a fine point. That's probably close to extra fine there. But that's all they offered and your standard injection molded feed. So we're going to pick one of these to ink up. Pretty certain it's going to be the transparent one and maybe a new Birmingham ink. 
And let's see how that fine nib writes. So the Moon Man boxes came in these uh, cellophane sleeves. So the 1A is the clear one, the 1C is the brown one. We'll give you the translations of the Chinese characters that are on these labels. Well, after watching uh, Chris Sang's excellent review of this pen, a link will go into the description so you can also watch it. It's good to watch reviews from uh, different pen reviewers because each of us take a different approach. Each of us have different reasons why we like and enjoy pen. I just enjoy them from writing, engineering-wise, construction, manufacturing. I just can't imagine being the product manager, putting together all these parts, the machining, the sourcing, all of those things. And it's, to me, amazing that we can purchase it delivered to my door for a few dollars. So this is extremely clear acrylic, as I talked about before. This top finial unscrewed very easily. And I just used some rubber grippers. Uh, these are lobster bands. Those that might be in a part of the world where lobsters are used. And once you've unscrewed this band, you could use it as a magnifier if you so like. It will magnify quite well. The um, optical qualities of this turned acrylic is just phenomenal. When you take the clip off, you can see how it's made. So this is a one piece of metal, bended, stamped, and folded to form a clip. As we talked about, it's a stiff clip. And I'll show the nib being pulled out, you know, the standard plastic feed. And I think they did a nice job with this uh, nib collar here. You know, there's an O-ring at the bottom, an O-ring at the top. There's an O-ring here at the top of the section, so they've understood that an eyedropper needs to be sealed well, and this design will meet that purpose. One of the good things about being able to take apart the cap is occasionally you'll get ink in your cap for various reasons. You could drop a pen. You know, you could bring a pen in from the cold, nib down, and as it warms up, air in the barrel pushes out ink into the cap. There's a ton of reasons. I've experienced them all. So it's nice that you can take that whole cap apart and thoroughly clean it. Again, nice design, well executed, well made. It's a nice pen. I was able to pull the nib out. I did my normal flushing in soapy water and that made the nib easier to pull out. You know, just a rubber gripper on the nib assembly, a rubber gripper on the side of the nibs, a little twist and pull, and it came out. It's just that nice. This has that new Moon Man logo on it where it's on two lines, and, it, and of course we see it's an extra fine. So people may not want an extra fine. So I put in this excellent medium. You can see the difference in the tipping, and it fits fine in the pen you know so you could easily replace nibs with a number of different ones and if you wanted to go even bigger here's one of those 1.2s i had a little bit of difficulty putting in a pen bbs nib because i think the curvature is a little bit different but these are all six millimeter at the end of the nib and they're all 35 millimeters long so that generally is a number six size nib so I put back in the Moon Man nib, and when I put it back in, as I put the feet as close to the end of the nib as I could. Uh, the, you know, the nib might be a little dry, so hopefully that'll help it out. Uh, there's other things we can do, but this is where we're going to start, and we'll see how it writes. Yes, the pen can be held up with a crab, and it is definitely crab-worthy. We're going to bring in the LED light to really examine this acrylic, as I like to examine it. So we're going to slowly turn off the LEDs. And the room is a little bit on the dark side. You can see how the camera adjusts. So we're going to bring in the LED and play it on this resin. It's an excellent cracked ice 
resin. I don't think I've seen one exactly like this. And there is some transparency to the solid brown color as we remove the cap. We obviously have to go inside. You can see how that thickness changes and varies. And you can see there's also some transparency to the resin. My LED strobes, hopefully not creating any <clears throat> strange mental conditions. And there's that excellent Moon Man engraving. I like it. I've said that many times, and I probably will say it many more times in this review. This is a fun pen. I noticed in some of the pictures in the listings, there was a two-tone nib. That's on the brown one. That might explain some of the price differences that you see in the listings for the brown pen. But the nib on the clear Q1 is just a straight stainless steel nib. In working with the pen... I noticed one thing that I think is quite impressive is the thickness of that turned acrylic is just excellent. So this is an extremely sturdy, substantial pen in addition to being a fat boy. And the other thing to notice is how this section fits nicely into the cap. It's a nice tight fit and that should keep it from drying out. Hopefully. I've had people ask, how do you fill an eyedropper pen? So we're going to show you on camera how you do that. I always put a little bit of silicone grease on O-rings and threads. It's just what I do. And I also put a little bit on the nib assembly. I use this syringe to pull up about two and a half milliliters of ink. I've already used water to measure the ink capacity here, and I'm going to fill it close to that ledge. I always start from the bottom, squeeze very slowly, and that's where I'm going to fill it to. And there's almost nothing left in the syringe, so it, it took that two and a half milliliters, and we're going to take the section, making certain everything is kept vertical, and we're going to thread that into place, screw it down, make certain that it's tight. And what I do is I turn it upside down because there's no ink in the feed. So I know there's a whole bunch of other tricks. Some people overfill it, so when they put in the section, it forces ink into the feed. But I don't like that because it gets a little messy at times. I think you can see why I use this ink color because I think it's going to look great in the pen. And I just, again, I can't say again as much as I love those optical qualities of this resin that they used in this clear pen. We're going to put this aside a little bit, talk about the pen, and we're going to leave it set, nib down to saturate the feed. It's hard to appreciate the size of the pen, but let's put it in reference to some other common pocket pens. Here's your Tobacco Sport in Cognac. Here's a Pen BBS 471, a Wong Kai Mini. Here's that new Titanium Delight that I have. Here's just a generic uh, black pen. And here's the brown one. I mean, it this pen dwarfs any pen. It certainly dwarfs the standard size pocket pens. As one pen reviewer might say, for giggles and snorts, let's look at the Moon Man Q1 in relationship to some standard pens, just so you can get an idea of the size of the pen. And these are pretty big size pens, an M800, Birmingham 6th Avenue, and a Centini Libra. Longer pens, definitely, but girth-wise, they don't hold a candle to the Q1. I just find this to be an amusing visual. I certainly enjoy it. 
So yes, in case you were wondering, they are crab and turntable worthy. And I have to admire the crab's strength in holding up the pens while it's rotating. They don't get motion sickness like some of us do. So overall, I like these pens on many levels. We will uh, look at writing uh, just uh, next in the video. And, and this is sold in a number of places. It is definitely sold on eBay where I purchased it. And here's an auction. Here's some examples of eBay listings. And the price ranges uh, quite a bit, so you need to be careful when you buy and do some searches to ensure that you get the pen you want at the price that's the best price. It's also sold on Amazon. But on Amazon, the brown acrylic version costs uh, substantially more than the clear one. So look out for that. I'm very happy that I got both of them because it certainly is a different look by having that color resin and uh, cracked ice design. And I think we need to pay homage to Fat Man. Um, having grown up in the 60s with Duck and Cover and all the other um, <clears throat> Cold War emotions. I also was a student of uh, physics. Enrico Fermi was one of my uh, role models. Let's zoom in a little bit because I always think it's good to give the crab some additional exposure. And they do try to look good. And these pens do look good. It's always a challenge when you got a lot of ink and I've got some new inks. So I chose this ink to put into the clear Q1. I do love this turquoise teal green blue blue green type of ink. I don't see any sheen there and certainly no water resistance but it's a nice color. My only concern is this is on the light side. It's not as saturated as the rich inks that they make. But we'll see how that extra fine nib handles it. Now it's for that all important putting nib on paper. The cap comes off in just a slightly under two turns. Kusang could write with this without posting it, and I can understand that. We'll give you the lengths. It's short. It is a short pen. I'm not concerned about scratching, so it does post, and you do feel that cap. It changes the balance, but not enough, from my viewpoint, to preclude you from posting. It's fairly secure. And I could actually write with this post-it over the camera because it's not going to hit the camera. That section is beefy. Those threads, you can feel them, but they're not sharp. There is a big step up here to the barrel. And I don't think anybody would want to hold it up there. We'll give you the diameter of the barrel just so you can put things in perspective. The pen doesn't feel as heavy as it actually weighs. And I weighed it before and after inking it up, and based on that, there's three milliliters of ink in there. So that's really nice. So one gram is equal to one milliliter, and the inked up pen weighs three grams more. I just took the cap off. It doesn't stay good posted when you're writing, at least it doesn't for me. So the nib works great for an extra fine. There's a little bit of feedback on this Fabriano paper. Probably Toma River paper you wouldn't get the feedback. But I'm not an extra fine nib guy, and this would certainly work for me. And this isn't 
the most saturated ink, but it still looks good on the paper. It actually has a decent amount of shading to it, which is nice. So how would I rate this pen? Very, very difficult, because this is a unique pen unto itself. But we need to put it in perspective, so I'm going to give it a 9.0. It gets two checks for being cute. And I'll give the nib a check because it does work well. Why not more than 9.0? Because this pen is an acquired taste. It's not for everyone. You'd have to love it. You know, there's a little statement, either love it or hate it. There you can see a little bit how that can be used to give you some interesting visuals. But I happen to love it, so it gets a 9 from me. Why, why is the box called Moon Man and the eBay posting was called um, More Junk or Mojin, as, as I would pronounce it? But as we talked about, there was a Caveco trademarked Moon Man as a uh, name for pen and, and writing equipment. And they're now telling eBay and other sellers that they can't let anybody else sell Moon Man pens except Caveco, and of course Caveco is not going to do that. So people are just changing the name of the listing, and when you get the package, it says Moon Man. So I uh, don't think that's done much to affect Moon Man's sales, but for some reason Caveco felt they had to do something. It's uh, an interesting world, the world of pens. So we've reached the end of this video. Thank you for watching. And yes, it does start up right away. And if you rotate it, or if you don't put the nib on paper, which sometimes happens over the camera, you might get some thin spots. But that's me, not the pen. I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy. Enjoying your pens, be they fat or be they skinny, be they short or be they long. Just enjoy putting ink on paper, on vellum. It's the end of this video. And we're going to say bye. I think I'm going to enjoy this ink and a few more pens.